What's up, Zach? How you doing, man? Good, man. What's up? How can I help you out? Well, um, I don't really have like a question. I was kind of uh, thinking I could maybe get a little bit of input from you. So for the past two and a half years, I've been wholesaling. I've closed deal after deal. It's not been tough for me. The first 10 months was tough. And then I got my first deal. Then they started, you know, falling like dominoes. The problem is I kind of got caught on this like hamster wheel, right? So like, I always feel like I need a partner because it's hard to delegate all these tasks and it's hard to do everything alone. And you kind of probably know what I'm talking about, but um, I would get like cold callers from the Philippines and they weren't producing quite enough leads, you know, and I've had good VAs before with another partner that I had, but then again, there's the partner and I feel like there's just too many chefs and that kind of spoils the broth when it comes to the profits. So I'm trying to figure out how I can scale. I've done everything from SMS. I did, I had the same problem as the last guy with Twilio and basically it's the, the wording that they're using. Um, you know, I used them through batch. I had to switch to launch control. We started doing $800 a month on launch control, the, the big plan where you send out 20,000. I feel like maybe even my lists aren't really accurate. I do get a lot of leads with SMS as to where my cold callers I didn't. I even fired some of my cold callers and hired some more in Tijuana, Mexico for $1,800 for the month. They weren't producing. So it's the scaling. And then the other big thing is, I mean, like when you think about wholesaling, everybody wants to be the CEO, right? Like everybody wants to be the big boss. They want to have their company. So it's hard to find junior acquisitions and find other people that really want to work underneath me. What do you, what do you, what do you think about all that? What market are you in? I'm in Phoenix, but I actually do virtual. So if I get a deal, like I'll look for some hedge funds, like SFR3, I'll look in certain markets and just kind of hit the fizz bows or you know but it's just i'm on a hamster wheel man dude i welcome to my life okay i mean Same. It, bro if you can find me somebody that can do all that perfectly and cheap is very, dude i've been on this journey this scaling type journey for like four three and a half four years all right so like i've looked at it every which way why do you think i focus on really main three marketing channels okay because it gets too crazy man and so nice. honestly what i have found is the big three right so let's talk about the three really quick and because i think you're using a lot of them right sms are you using the double whammy script what's that so make sure you use the double whammy script and this is because right. twilio the carriers the way sms works again i think you're smart enough you know this because you do a lot of deals with it is if you say certain words your deliverability rate goes down twilio doesn't like it people like block you and then the algorithm doesn't like it right yeah and the key hidden secret about that is if you get a reply you can say whatever you want on the sms right you don't get blocked you're fine right right and so for my double whammy scripts i use zero words that will get flagged they're really simple they're like hey chris i just drove by one two three main street is it is this the owner by chance that's like what i did i got your script off of your off your website and then i kind of put it in there but i implemented it in a different way with my own words that were still not you know what i mean that way it would kind of have my own taste to it no that that's you have to do that because if you use my script it's going to get flagged because i've used that too many times yeah and then i put the spinner tokens i do all these things and so every text is different and then i get a reply back and then i hit them with whatever i want that's why i avoid all those issues with sms i still get some to this day but you, you gotta get very creative with it and so do you have a va answering the sms who do you have answering the sms um it's me i mean like right now that's kind of what i got going on because i let my other vas go just because they were i produced five leads in a month and i'm like dude i can produce five in a day sms blasting okay so maybe you get a va for sms i i'm always big on those because as someone that does sms you know pretty quick that two things are really important texting back is really important and then number two is most of your conversations suck for sms right mm. and so i would say 90 percent of the conversations for texting i can have a va answer Doc, you're terrible. I'm not interested in any of these things. The only point of my VAs for SMS, if you have any interest in selling your property or you have a weird question that might show interest, it gets sent to my acquisitions agent. And then they only answer, if we set, if we get 3,000 replies in the day, 300 to go to our acquisitions agents because those are ones that we can work on. The, the 2,700 are just track, right? right? And so that saves us a lot of time too. Well, let's go to cold calling and the main question you have, which is they're not producing, right? There's a reason why your VAs aren't producing. Now, first of all, you know this with employees, they'll literally never work as hard as you and they care about money to a point and that's pretty much the success of the company is not as important as just the job type thing they're employees this is the one thing i've learned about employees they do not care to a point and that's not a mean thing but that isn't the priority they did not start the business they did not grind from the beginning they did not go through all the struggle and financial hardship you did they, they don't have it the business is your baby and this person is like a i don't know not even like a babysitter right like they're they're like a babysitter to a point like you know that's not your kid yeah and, and, so and nobody cares about your kid like you'll care about your kid you know what i mean they'll care about your kid but not as bad much as you you will exactly, exactly. Well, 
it in, give it a good night kiss, and read it. They don't do that, right? No. But they They're should not they, read books for their kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but but dude, like they don't need to because it's not their kid. The only person yeah. that's going to treat their kid like that is going to be a parent, usually, right, or a sibling or something like that. And so sometimes, especially me when scaling up, I had these unfair expectations for my VA, and I, I learned really hard. This is for my acquisitions agents. So this is the hardest one I figured out. My VAs and my acquisitions agents at most are 60 to 70% as good as me at most. And that's tr all the training in the world. And that was a big problem because you go from making 100K a month to 70K a month and you're paying them. That sucks, right? Mm. You don't like that. That's, that's the worst thing in the world. But I realized if I have two cold callers at 60% effectiveness, that's 120%. So I'm actually getting 20% more money. And so that's the way I looked at cold callers. I know they're going to suck, but if you have enough of them, they're going to end up doing well. This is why in, um, you know, like wars and battles and things like that, you can have the most elite fighting force and you can have an average fighters. But if you have enough average fighters, it's going to destroy the elite fighting force, like the uh, 300, right? Right. That, that's just how it works, right? And, and unfortunately, like you have the best UFC fighter in the world. If he's got four, if he has to fight four guys that are average, he might win. But you got 10 guys, he's not going to win, right? And so for me, I figured I just got to get more volume to make up for their lack of skill. And that's honestly what I found. And so for my cold calling, which I think you'll find interesting, I think you know this though, my cold callers only focus on one thing. If you are interested in selling your property, that's great. My partner, Chris, is going to actually go by and give you a call in about an hour or two. Is that okay? That's it. We that's all they, they just they all they care is about if you're interested because they were Filipino, they had accent. They could say the two sentences very well, and that's what we focus really hard on. How do you see these two sentences as clear and concise possible? Mm -hmm. And they don't understand the American slang either, or the the what? sarcasm that you get with the Americans. They have a hard time picking up the sarcasm. Somebody will you'll be in Detroit oh, yeah. and say, you know, I want a million for my house, and I'm like, dude, there's no house in Detroit that's worth a million dollars. Like, you know, not in you know where we're looking. But here's the thing, Detroit. man. My training's elite. Like, you see how I train the wholesalers. I mean, I have the largest wholesaling course. I, you, you know me, I, I, I can train people very well. I use that for my VA. So why my VAs are actually really effective is really three things. Number one, I train them really well. I have about 10 hours of me cold calling that I make my VAs watch. They see everything, every objection, every piece of sarcasm, everything. 10 hours of me cold calling in my own business. All right. Number two, and this is really important, but I, I scare my VAs like crazy. And this is something I think you can implement. All right. I make sure I actually, I personally, on my cell phone, every, I think 2000 lead VA calls me. All right. I put, I, I, I put a secret name. All right. I'm not going to say the secret name on here, but it's, it's something <laughs> cool. You know, it's like Chris Thunder. All right. It's like something funny, but it goes to my cell phone and my VA knows every thousand or 2000 calls are actually going to call me and I'm pretend to be a seller. And if I hear them with an attitude, if I hear a rooster in the background, I hear it, they're fired. Okay. So they know they better be, it's like a mystery shopper. I got to be on my smart. tail because That's if I do smart. something wrong, boom, I'm done. A little scary, but it works, man. So I might get like two, three calls a day, um, depending, right? And I answer it. And yeah, I'm interested in some, but who is this? And I just pretend. If I hear attitude, if I hear noise in the back, something terrible, they're done, right? right. I record all the calls. So all their callings recorded and I can go back and listen to them. And the last but not last but not least is I talk to my team basically at least once a week, make sure everything's going down. Like everything's going well, what's going on, everything like that. But I train them really hard. Um, I, I will sometimes personally still uh, train my VAs just to make sure they know what they're doing. You are treating, so you're 1099 in these employees, right? Correct. So this is something I've learned. When you treat your employees like 1099, when you give them 1099, what are 1099 employees usually, or 1099 people that get paid on 1099? Commission. No, they're freelancers. They're entrepreneurs, no, they're right? Yeah, they're their own, their own person. You're paying them like an entrepreneur, but you are, per, you are trying to make them act like they're an employee. Right. And that's always the biggest issue. And that's something that really tough for me to learn, but it's true. And you do it to save money and you do it with good intentions. And I, Rick sometimes has this problem too, and we had to learn this problem, but we fixed it. You got to treat them like real employees and it sucks. It sucks. I hate it, but you have to treat them like employees. And so with our acquisitions agents, we pay on base and we pay on top of that for the deals they do. And they get paid very well, but I treat them like employees. And so for acquisitions agents, not even junior, I'll tell you for acquisitions agents, we do the 333 approach. And why I make the best acquisitions agent possible. I hate training acquisitions agents because I personally still, to this day, still have to do it. Do you know the 333 approach? I don't. So basically what we do is I will train an acquisitions agent and I will not let, I literally just pay them a base salary. They literally, I, I cost me money to train because I let them get some money. Hey, you're an employee because you're 10, you're not 1099, you're not 1099. You don't go to other places. You stay here. All right. And basically how that works is you are going to sit here and watch me close three deals on the phone. Okay. And we're training while we're doing it. And the deals have to be over 15, $20,000. And then we are going to do three deals together as partners where you're going to talk and try to close it. And I'm going to do it together. And we're going to do it together. We're going to three of those. And then you're going to close three deals in front of me on the phone or in person. For you, it's going to be on the phone. And after they do those nine deals, they 
should have all the knowledge in the world to close sell it. Cool. And boom, that's good to go, right? And it sucks to do, but I it costs more money for me to hire a new employee and just train them because it's my time than for me to actually go out here and pay them less and not train them as well. I train them like crazy. And I don't look for high drive people per se. I don't train people that want to get in a whole thing. I train people that want to work a job, a sales job. And that being said, it gives us less turnover. There's My salespeople make six figures very comfortably, but they have to work their butts off for it. And so unfortunately, you have to hire salespeople, not entrepreneurs. And it's, it's a clear difference uh, yeah. having a sales job and then having being an entrepreneur. Yeah. And you're kind of training someone up just to leave you. And I, I don't like that. So that's why I, I, I treat them a little differently, just because I found overall, it makes me more, more money, less acquisitions headache, and more just more success. So I would do that with the acquisitions junior agent. I would not pay them as much, but give them a little bit of a base and let them know it's a 40 hour week job. That's smart. And I think I want to do that because then that gets them out of the mindset of my, I work for myself on my own company. I, you know, I need to find people that are like an old car salesman, somebody that used to sell cars, you know, so I'm just Dude, wants to work. It's a little expensive, man. But like, hey, we're looking for a sales job here. And what we do is it's a real estate investing company looking for a sales job. Not, oh, this other wholesaler wants to get into wholesaling. Dude, ask somebody that gives wholesaling information out. People will suck knowledge out of you and then take you for nothing and not give you anything back. And I'm okay with that. Like, I'll give everyone information for free. I don't want anything from them, okay? That works for me. For a natural business though, that's terrible. And I have, dude, you know how many people might own market want to work for me? Like they're doing me a favor working for free? No, you're gonna get my best information and then you're gonna go on your own and just try to cut, undercut me and learn all my best stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I, my last um, four guys, one was a bartender, good at talking to sellers. Uh, other guy worked at a um, car salesman and the other person was actually a waiter um, and sales, right? If you're good at talking to people and you can learn my process, you'll be good to go. I don't really need anyone that has real estate experience uh, to a point. I actually like employee mindsets better because I'm looking for employees. Do what I say, work their job. And it's interesting when you see these freelance people because sometimes they work less hard because they feel like because they work from home, it's a weird phenomenon. I work from home, I only have to work 25, 30 hours a week. No, you sit on, you sit behind that computer, you're there nine to five. Yep. And I love employees because they'll do that. Your little entrepreneurship Gary guy who's 18 years old, who wants to have a Lambo and a Rolex, he might not want to do that. Um, so that's the big issue. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for all your value. I know I'm taking up some time right now, but I, I really appreciate it because it does help. Even the stuff like uh, the video yesterday really helped me in some points. And I've been doing acquisitions for a long time. I mean, I'm completely comfortable picking up the phone, getting on there. Hey, Mr. Seller, how you doing? You know, just really getting these deals. But uh, I just want to say thank you. And I appreciate it. I really do. Of course, do. man. What's your help? Cool. Thanks, Zach.